guys, welcome back to the Aquarium Live with Andrew. Today we're gonna to be checking out this automatic egg harvester that I've created using two different types of breeder boxes and melded together in such a way that you never have to get your hands wet to have to remove eggs from your tank. What I think is an incredible thing because that's the problem with a lot of other systems is that you have to constantly be inside of your tanks removing and disturbing them and disrupting their habits. But with this, everything is external in terms of egg collection so you don't actually have to get your hands in there and disturb them from their fun times. So let's turn you guys around and I'll show you guys how it's actually made and we'll actually go over and set it up for you guys so that you guys can do this at home with materials that are readily available at your local hardware stores as well as online from Amazon. And the system here is a combination of two different breeder boxes. Alone, these guys didn't work out very well. I tried using the Penplex Aqua Nursery by itself, but the plastic floats, so it actually won't stay sunk in an aquarium. There's no way to really isolate the eggs easily in that type of a system. And obviously with a Fluval breeder box, you have the normal grate that goes along the bottom that you can, but I just found that it wasn't enough space for my CPDs to be able to spawn continuously and me to be able to harvest off eggs. And I still have the same problem where I had to come in here and either physically remove the parents or actually remove the grating and be able to try to siphon up all the eggs off the bottom. So this way, the eggs that are spawned in here, and this works for any type of egg scattering fish that doesn't have adhesive eggs. They have to be non-adhesive for this to be able to work. And it works for zebrafish, but that's where initially I got the idea from. And then some other YouTubers made videos about how they made similar ones. And I was like, hey, if they can do it, I can do it. So I tried it again and I actually got this to work. So the eggs from the CPDs or zebra daniels or whatever you have that are not adhesive will get spawned in this area. You can see air that's bubbling up through here and that's creating a draw on the system as the air is rising, water is also rising with it. So the eggs get spawned in here, they get sucked down to the bottom, they get sent across and up into the breeder box. And because of the weight of the eggs, they will actually settle out along the bottom here, as you can see, and they don't actually go over the outflow up there because of their density. I had a grate up there initially that was very, very fine, and you can sort of see how fine it is, that it is super, super fine. And it was just ended up clogging and almost overflowing the system, and I never found any eggs up there, so it wasn't necessary. And so, this system works great, and I have collected hundreds and hundreds of eggs at this point uh, for my CPDs. And now that you've guys seen how it actually works, we're gonna go over to the tabletop, and I'm gonna show you guys how to make it. And the beauty with this system is that you can easily move it from one tank to the next to the next. And I could take this down to my 40 gallon breeder that I have down here, or I could take it out to my 27 gallon cube aquarium and be able to spawn fish in a show tank without actually having to remove the parents, which I think is a phenomenal thing to do. Here we have before us everything that we're going to need for this project. We're gonna need the two different breeder boxes, the Fluval slash Marina breeder box. I'm using the medium size. You could use the large size or the small size. I don't think either one of those would be problematic if that's what you have around, as well as the Penplex breeder box. From these two, you're going to need the grate for the bottom of the Penplex, but you're not gonna need the grate for the Fluval breeder box. You're gonna to want to remove the egg catching area or fry catching area off of the Penplex, as well as remove the bottom pieces, just so that you only have this little nub down here to be able to attach in our tubing and hosing that we will need. You're also going to need some sort of spotting material, though I'm gonna to experiment to see if we actually need this. We're also going to need some sort of elbow, as well as a drill bit we can attach our airline directly into there so that it can bubble up that way. We're also going to need some half inch tubing. We're also going to need some scissors to cut that tubing. One other thing that we will need. We need some sort of clear container here because with how the uh, Penplex system is set up, there's these slits along the entire length of the breeder box, which are not problematic. Fish can't get in and eggs can't come out of this. But on the back side here, we have a larger opening that allows for both fish and eggs to be able to get in and out of the system. So we're going to want to cover this up. So we're going to use just a plastic lid. We're gonna cut a little sliver there and we're gonna glue that into place. So that way it is no longer an exit point for eggs or fish in and out of our system and allow us to harvest as many eggs as we possibly can. So the optional stuff that I mentioned is that I'm going to experiment without this initially. I'm going to actually get rid of this and I'm going to put just a mesh net over top of it because celestial prodania legs are one millimeter to 1.3 millimeters in size. You're gonna want something that allows those to pass through, but not the adults. So this is the mesh screen that I'm using. That way the eggs can get scattered across here and then fall down uh, into the system and not have to worry about all of the yarn and whatnot getting in the way. So to that end, I'm gonna be using some super glue and some flex glue because that's what I have on hand to make it. 
If I had aquarium silicone, I would use that, but I don't have any right now, and I'm not gonna go out and spend money to buy that. Finally, this was one iteration that I tried doing. Because I'm using five gallon tanks, this is too large. It actually sits too tall up in the tank, so it doesn't work for me. If you have a larger tank, like a 10 gallon or 20 gallon tank, a funnel with just a simple mesh grate across the bottom might be a perfect thing for you, and you might not have to buy the Penplex grater box. But I would check the size and height of your tank and where you're gonna be putting it to see if this is an option for you. And all honesty, this probably cost, I think this was $6 to buy, and this was free to me because I traded some plants for it, but it was, I think, $15 online. So it's really not that huge of a difference in price. And as always, don't tell my wife that we're doing this, because this is our kitchen table. I don't know if she would uh, be appreciative of it. So let's get into actually making it. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna drill this. I wanna drill out the hole for the airline tubing and be able to fit in. And this is a quarter inch bit. It is the same exterior diameter, maybe a little bit smaller than airline tubing. So it should create a nice snug fit that we can put it in there. So now that we've got this cut, we can see how well our airline tubing goes into here and it fits. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we can go ahead and get the rest of it set up knowing that this works. And just a note on this, this is quarter inch, or sorry, half inch uh, elbows. And I think in all this cost, maybe $35 to make. This allows you to create this without having to use a 3D printer. Um, and it's just sort of a plug and play system that allows you just to create something relatively easy and doesn't take a lot of other pieces or components to it. All right, so now that we've got this done, we're going to get the other plastic piece fitted to the bottom of the breeder box. So in this situation here, I can't really get it to stay too tightly on there. You can see it's just sort of coming off. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of super glue around the edge of this and put it back into place and let it sit there. If I had aquarium silicone, I'd use that. But again, like I said, I don't have that. So we're just gonna have to make do with what I have. All right, now that that's cured up a little bit, we can go ahead with the next part of it, which is going to be attaching our elbow or 90 degree elbow into the piece of plastic that we already have on the end. We have it now connected. Our airline's gonna be coming in, bubbling up here. And now we're going to need some pieces for us to be able to connect to our breeder box. And so the beauty with this is, is that you can adjust this system like you could normally in a tank to however tall or short you wanted it. But with the additional piping that we have here or tubing, we can further extend how far down we want this tube to be to create a longer or shorter breeder box inside of our or spawning area inside of our tank. So I'm just gonna work this down along the tube here. And then we have now in essence extended it further as well as we can just extend it up here with our normal movability within it. So we're going to attach this part back on to the fitting here. And so now this will be inside of our tank like this. We'll have our airlift valve going into here and it will go into this side of the breeder box here. So if you're looking at it, it would look something like this that would allow you to have the breeder box and then have the spawning container underneath it. One thing to note about uh, the Penplex breeder box is that it has such tight fitting sides that if eggs were to get stuck along the bottom part here, it's rather difficult for them to get sucked up by the uh, current that is being produced. So what I'm going through and I'm gonna do is melt these corners in a little bit. So that way if I have a pipette that I'll be using to collect the eggs out, I can just put that into the tank really quickly and blow water down there and it will mix everything up and then have it settle back down to the center so that they can get pushed up and pulled out of the tank that way rather than having to get in there with my hands and mess with it. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're just gonna heat up some of the corners and then flatten them out. And this little bit of the corners getting heated up and mashed down a little bit isn't going to cause any problems with adults or eggs coming out of here because it's going to be such a small gap that it should be extremely negligible. So we're going to make sure that now it uh, fits in here. And I recommend doing this one way or the other, regardless if you are going to be using this or just normal stuff. So I'll bring it up here for you guys to be able to see it. So you can see here along the corners how there's a little bit of a gap there now that I could then be able to shoot water down into and be able to move eggs that are stuck along the sides or the bottom into the little catchment area and sucked out of the tank itself. 
So another thing that we need to do now is we need to create a cover for this little plastic piece that I talked about earlier where fish and eggs can both escape from. So I'm just gonna take some clear plastic, a plastic lid that I have, and I'm gonna cut it up and we're gonna super glue it onto the inside and that will prevent those fish and eggs from getting in and out. And the plastic that I'm using is just an old deli cup lid that I had laying around. Cool, that's in place, so let's move on to the next part. So now that we have the entire system right here, right now, you could stop here and be done with it. But I wanna see if we can eliminate using spawning mops and spawning moss and all those different types of things. I'm just going to attach this great mesh over top of what would normally go inside the breeder box and see if I can just get CPDs to spawn on there all by themselves. Looks like my flex glue is all dried up. That's what you get for doing this all in one take. I'm gonna see if I can't use some super glue to attach it down. In the past, I haven't had much luck. Well, that isn't working. So I'm gonna get this put together with some silicone and uh, you guys will see the complete the project. With the magic of video editing, we have it all together. So I went ahead and added in the grate and silicone it on top. Again, you don't have to do this. You can just use your normal spawning mobs and you'll have great success with collecting eggs up in here. But I just wanna see if I can do away with the spawning mob to see if that is an actual feasible thing to do with Celestial Prodanios or other types of egg scattering fish. You know that I have a rock in there just to make sure that it doesn't float up accidentally because it was kind of looking like that. If you guys want to see how this progresses along without any of the spawning mop, make sure you subscribe to the channel below and check out one of the other videos after this one. I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.